Okay, now that is the standard story that most economists believe about education. Students show up as mere potential, they show up as clay, the teacher shapes them into something that the market desires, and then they put them in the kiln, they stay that way, and then employers like you. Okay, the signaling model is a very different story. According to the signaling model, you arrive as a fully formed sculpture, right, in the extreme version of the signaling model, you arrive as a, arrive as a fully formed sculpture. However beautiful a sculpture you will ever be, you are already when you show up at class. And what does your teacher do? He puts a sticker on you. Puts a sticker on you saying beautiful or not so beautiful, like really ugly. <laughs> your, your teacher puts a label on you, right? That's what the point, that is what the point of school is. It's not to change people, but to label them. All right, now, of course, uh, you, when, you, when, you, when you think about it more, you say, well, look, it's not like 100% of the, of the courses that you spend in school are ones that are not valued by employers, and that's absolutely right. right? So sometimes when I'm speaking, I make it sound like I think that education is 100% signaling. Now, even I don't think that. I guess there are some useful skills that are taught in schools. I mean, as I said, most classes, or at least a lot of classes, do not teach useful skills. Some do. Right? Reading and writing is genuinely useful. Right? Reading, uh, many kinds of math are genuinely useful. Uh, there's a few other subjects that you may have taken at some point that have some practical application. Okay? So if you've ever taken you know, computer science, or how about driver's ed? Driver's ed actually is kind of useful. Maybe not. Well, actually, there's, there are plenty of jobs that use driver's ed. Right? Any job where you have to drive a car, in a sense, uses driver's ed. <laughs> All right, so I'm not saying then that 100% of all education is signaling, but I am saying that a high fraction of it is. A high fraction of it is signaling. Because, right? of course, if a job requires reading and writing and you don't have very good reading and writing, then there's no, you don't need any big theory about why employers are not hiring you when you don't know how to read and write. But you do need some kind of story about why they, why they don't want to hire you when, you aren't, when you've uh, missed an Aristotle class. Right? That's, that's, that's a bit odd. Okay, so who cares about all this? What difference does it make? What difference does it make? Okay, well, selfishly speaking, it doesn't make any difference at all, which is the beauty of the model. <laughs> all right, so you can go your whole life trying to do well in school without ever wondering what the point is. Right, why do you ever need to know what the point is? All you need to know for practical purposes is that if you go and get some additional years of education, employers will pay you extra money. The end. doesn't matter why. Right, the only reason you would need to know is, first of all, out of intellectual curiosity, like if you ever were in a class and think this is so boring and pointless, why am I here? And the signaling model is there to say, ah, oh, this is why you're here. And you're here because you need to show your abilities. You need to go and show off, show off your abilities because they're hard for employers to observe. So the easiest way for you to go and show people you have these abilities is sit here and suffer for years. That's the answer. All right, so, but in, so you know, selfishly speaking, it doesn't really matter why you're, why you're in school. As long as you know that you get paid for doing it, you can go ahead and do it, and that's fine. Right? And again, employers don't even need to really understand the story. All that employers need to know is when they go and hire someone who did badly in school, they, that they are not worth a high salary to them. If an employer knows that, say, look, once I hired a guy who had all Fs and he was a terrible employee, I'm never doing that again. And you say, yeah, but why? He had Fs in a bunch of subjects that were relevant to real life. Employer doesn't need to, doesn't need to really wonder about that. Whatever. I don't know why. All I know is I'm not doing that again because I lost money. Right, so the, the, the students don't need to understand and employers don't need to understand in order for the model to work. So who does care? Well, you know, you know, someone's curious. But the other reason why you might want to understand the model is for making education policy. Right? If you're wondering about what kind of education system is a good one, what kind of government policy towards education would be, say, economically efficient or, or ethically wise right, or eth ethically justified, uh, what, what signaling models imply is that, contrary to economists' usual story, education actually has some big negative externalities. Economists usually talk about positive externalities, like, oh, well, education reduces crime, education makes people into better citizens, education makes it easier to get people to give you directions that are accurate when you happen to be lost, right? so and So economists usually focus on these positive externalities. The signaling model implies that education actually has big negative externalities. Yeah, here's the best way to think about it. So classic story, everyone is sitting down at a concert, you want to see better, what is something that you personally can do as an individual in order to get a better view? Stand up. Stand up. Therefore, it follows with absolute certainty that if everyone in the concert stands up, everyone can see better, right? No, wrong. It does not follow. In fact, what happens if everyone stands up, then probably nobody sees better. I guess, you know, there's few people, few people who happen to have really, a really high ratio of Leg length, to, uh, leg length to height do benefit. <laughs> right, so people with unusually long legs relative to their height actually you know, do benefit if everybody stands up, but their feet still hurt. Right, so, uh, yeah, it is not, but it's not true that, if, uh, that, uh, that because one person who stands up at a, con at a concert, that one person can see better, that if everyone stands up, everyone can see better. 
And what the Stigley model is saying is that the same holds for education. One person gets more education that one person makes more money. Great. Therefore, it may, this is a wonderful thing for government to subsidize. We should always want more and better of it. Wrong. Right? Uh, because if you subsidize it, it's not just the case that one more person is going to get more education. A whole lot more people are going to get more education. And what is life going to be like if a whole lot more, if a lot more, more, more people have, have more, a lot more people have heavily signaled or been encouraged to signal that they are smart, that they're hardworking, that they're conformist, and so on? Well, uh, basically, what it means is that if everyone else now, if the average person has one more year, what do you need to do to distinguish yourself? You need to get an additional year on top of that. So back in 1945, only about 25% of Americans over the age of 25 finished high school. So back in those days, you could go and introduce your fiancé to, to your mom as a college graduate. And your, your mom might say, wow, she's a brilliant girl. Has she been in you know, wait, No, as, as, as a high school graduate. And I say college, as a high school graduate. Finished high school, not many people do that. Right, so finishing high school was actually a big deal back in the old days. It was a sign that you were at least middle management material. Now, if you were to go around saying, I finished high school, look at me, people would think that was kind of funny. <laughs> I knew. You know, like, depending upon what circles you travel in, but if you went, went into a corporation and tried to say, look, I finished high school, all right then. <laughs> so explain to me the many attractive opportunities you have for me as a high school graduate. I'd say, well, uh, I will, we have a few, and uh, allow me to, to show them to you. Uh, you, know, you might perhaps eventually become a manager of the janitors. Okay, as, for example, that might be a job that, that you would be qualified for as a high school graduate. First, of course, you'll need to learn the trade of actually being a janitor. Then we'll consider your promotion after a few years. Okay, so may not be quite, may not be quite that bad, but uh, so still, it is not really considered very impressive that, that someone has gone to high school anymore because so many more people have finished high school. Right now, the percentage of people over the age of 25 who finish college is about 25%. So now that says something about you. It's not incredibly impressive because one in four people over the age of 25 has done it. But it still does put you, about, put you apart from the pack to some degree. But now if you want to really impress people, you need to get an advanced degree. So you, know, you get a master's degree, get a PhD. That's what you now need to do in order to show people how great you really are. Okay, so 50 years ago, someone might have been able to be a professor in many schools with only a master's degree. Right? Or they might have actually been able to be hired as an instructor after they finish their undergraduate degree and when they're working on their master's degree. Now that would be extremely rare. Okay? So basically according to the signaling model, if the government were to say subsidize signaling, the result is that everybody signals more, and then employers, in order to decide who to pick, just increase their standards. Right? So employers are looking to get people who are in the top 10% to do a job. If uh, people are encouraged to get more education uh, from uh, the government subsidy, this just changes the amount of education that you need in order to impress people. So another way you can think about it is that in the signaling model, education is, at least to a substantial degree, about jumping through hoops. So what happens if the government encourages people to jump through more hoops? Then, in order to indicate to people that you are a good hoop jumper, you have to jump through additional hoops. You have to spend more and more of your years in school. Okay, so if, you ever, if you ever have the feeling that oh, it's taking me a really long time to start real life, like you know, go and read, what, you know, in previous centuries, right now, many people would have had almost 10 years on the job. Right now I'm reading The Count of Monte Cristo. And the guy who becomes the Count of Monte Cristo, he's going to be appointed a captain at the age of 20, which people at the time consider a little young to put a man in charge of a ship. You know, you remember, you know, these are like big ships that, that are you know, incredibly large investments. And yet, you know, in 19th century France, would not have been considered absurd to put a 20-year-old in charge of a ship because he may have easily had eight years of experience in sailing by that point. Okay, so now I don't think there are many 12-year-olds who are you know, acquiring experience on the high seas. <laughs> so, instead, they would be spending many more years in education, then finally, after a much longer time, then they can actually start learning their job.